Hey guys, what's up? I'm back again with another request video. This time it's pitching. There's been a lot of debate in the community about pinpoint versus analog and which one you guys should be using. I will die on the hill that pinpoint is still better than analog even with how bad it is and I do expect it to get a slight buff to make it not nearly as bad as it has been, right? So how should you go about practicing pinpoint, right? So you come down, go to the bottom of the main menu here, custom practice. I would recommend the Brewers. I think if you can pitch with Corbin Burns, you can pitch with anybody. He has a very fast pinpoint delivery, and if you can pitch with him, I think you'll be good with guys like Ryan Presley and Josh Hader, right? So we're going to go over to pitching practice. We're going to use Corbin Burns, at least to start with. We're going to go to our options here. Uh, I have it on Hoff. All that really does is it increases or shrinks the par size of your pitches, depending on what you're on. I'll put it on beginner and we can see the tiny bar sizes, right? So ideally this is more representative of what pinpoint should be like. Uh, control, we're going to be on pinpoint with pitch trail. Uh, I'm a pitch trail fan. Some people use the ball with the chevrons. It doesn't let you know how a pitch breaks necessarily. It does not let you know how it's looking while it's breaking and it gives you a rough estimate of where the ball will go. I don't know why people do it. If you're looking to make World Series, I would not do it. Uh, I pitch out of strike zone and I hit out of strike zone like in my hitting video. Uh, I think it's beneficial to pitching and batting to see what pitches look like. Uh, if you're hitting and an opponent throws a nasty pitch, you can be like, oh, okay, I'm going to put that one in the duffel bag. I'll pull it out in a different game or later in this game. Add it to your repertoire. Uh, while pitching, you can kind of like trick the batter and see, well, if I was hitting, I would swing at this, and you can throw stuff like that, right? Kind of goes with pitch tunneling. I don't know if I'll get into that. It could be its own 15-minute video. Pitch tunneling is very intricate to being a good pitcher, in my opinion. Um, so pinpoint, right? What is pinpoint pitching? Uh, I'm sure some of you guys have tried it, and you're like, not for me. It's too hard. It's this. It's that. It's not that hard, right? It's about reps, and it's about being consistent with the motions, right? So you see I've picked a cutter. It is not the easiest pitch to throw. In theory, the easiest pitch to throw should be the four seam. In practice, that's not always the case because of the accuracy thresholds, right? The easier a pitch to throw is, the higher its accuracy threshold. I think a four seam has to be over like 92% accurate to count as a perfect, which is what you're looking for, right? So a cutter, not hard to throw. It's going to have a high accuracy threshold, but not like a four seam. So you see there's three components to a good pinpoint. There is your accuracy, which is how accurately you are doing the motion that it shows on the outside of the circle here. Uh, your speed matters, right? So if you're new to pinpoint, you might want to watch it go through the motion a couple times. Uh, I would not do that online necessarily. Maybe watch it one time maybe two times, not more than that. You will auto pitch and give up home runs. The second component is your timing, right? So you see that little circle at the bottom. When I start the motion, it gets bigger and then it shrinks. On the frame it shrinks, depending on your input lag, is when you need to drag down and hit that circle. And then that brings us to the last part, which is your accuracy, as in like degrees. You have to be close to the circle to throw a perfect. Once you feel comfortable with something like a cutter or a sinker, then you can go to harder pitches to throw. The hardest ones are typically a splitter, a fork ball, and a circle change. A lot of people struggle with the circle change. A lot of times that's because of what controller you're on, right? So I said in my hitting video, you kind of need to be playing on an old Xbox controller or an Elite controller. Uh, Power A has some alternatives. I did not like the one that I got. It got stick drift in like two weeks, but maybe there, maybe the $80 version might work better. I don't know. I can't speak from experience on that, but for me, I use old Xbox controllers with the D-pad that does not have all the hexagons and stuff or an Elite controller. You can change an Elite controller to make it work right. Uh, PlayStation does not have to worry about all this, but yeah, so with the circle change, you want to focus on your cadence, right? Pinpoint should be smooth, right? My advice is if you mess up the timing at the start, 
Do not overcorrect yourself. Maybe you can find the timing halfway through the pitch, but in general, just really pay attention to the cadence you're supposed to use. You see, when you slow yourself down and try to correct for mistakes, you get something like that. Just commit to what you're seeing. Uh, it should be smooth. A pinpoint never speeds up at any point. It goes the same pace around the circle the whole time, right? So it's about being smooth. It's always going to be the same speed, no matter what pitch you're throwing, no matter what. The only time it can change is when you have a pitcher with a different, different motion, right? So Corbin Burns always pitches out the stretch. Uh, if you don't know what the stretch is, most pitchers go to it when there's a runner on base because you can't have these long wind-up animations because base runners will steal bags on you, basically. Uh, so here's Woodruff. He pitches out the wind-up. You see how much more time you have to do the motion, and you also sit at the top for longer. Uh, it's just dependent on what pitcher you're using. You can see a circle change has a very, very low accuracy threshold. As long as you do not butcher the pitch, you should be able to throw a perfect. In theory, you should throw a perfect every pitch. If you want to be top 50, if you want to go flawless, you probably have to have like a 90% success rate on your perfects. Uh, all the top players in the world are still on pinpoint right now. Uh, there's a lot of discourse about analog. I have not seen analog work well. Uh, the year pinpoint came out, I was resistant to it at first. I didn't want to put the effort into learning it, so I stayed on analog. And I gave up a lot of home runs and did not strike out near as many batters. When I switched and actually learned pinpoint, my ERA went down. I stopped giving up such high exit velos and started winning more games. Pinpoint is definitely the way to go. I would recommend you guys putting in some effort to learning it. Uh, I think custom practice is probably going to be your best way to learn it. Uh, I would not change pitchers too much. Pick one pitcher, learn their motion. If you can learn one, you can learn them all. It's not that big of a change. And uh, yeah, if this has been helpful, a like, a subscription would be greatly appreciated. Uh, if you have any further questions, any comments, uh, I can answer them for you guys. And that's all. Peace.